Hey guys, welcome to VR Essentials, where we talk about the practical uses of virtual reality and the go-to place to get all your content about the HP Reverb G2. Today, we're going to talk about how to optimize the best graphics as possible for No Man's Sky using the HP Reverb G2. Today's shout out goes to David Starnes, Chris Van Kirkhoven, and Jose6616. Hi guys, bonjour, how are you? So today we're going to talk about No Man's Sky on the HP Reverb G2 and how to bump those graphics as much as possible and really stretch our machine to its outer limits. Now this is a two-part video. Today we're going to focus more on the setup. I'm going to bring you through my general guide as to where I start off in order to eventually get to the best graphics and also frame per seconds as I possibly can. And then in the next video, I'm going to show you how to sprinkle that golden dust to push it even further so that you can really get the smoothest gameplay, the highest fidelity. So be sure to be part, by the way, of the notification squad by enabling the notification bell after you hit subscribe so that you don't miss that video and YouTube tells you in your feed when it's been uploaded. Voice recognition authorized. Now, normally when I launch a VR experience for the very first time that I haven't tried, before, I will go inside of SteamVR and bump down the super sampling to 50% just to make sure that I don't have any issues when I launch the game. There's no stutter, there's no freezes of screen or blue screen or black screen or any issue of any kind. And also, if we look at other VR experiences, for example, Aceto Corsa Competizione, which we uploaded not too long ago to the channel, you could see that when we bumped it down to 50%, we actually got some very decent gameplay with some fast frame per second and also we didn't overheat the machine which is really key here. Now once I'm done with that of course I could expect anything out of the graphics will look beautiful to start off with or they will just look completely you know messed up and jaggered and everything. Incoming message. So the second step I normally take is I try to tweak the actual game settings to augment the graphics as much as I can. There's actually two ways you can go about this. Option one, you can just bump everything to as high as you possibly can to start off with and then incrementally go down, you know, as you go along to see what works and what doesn't work. But we're not going to take that approach because I find that the opposite approach actually works much better, which is we start off with the lowest settings first and then we bump up whatever we need to bump up incrementally to make sure that we don't miss out on performance and also not overheat our GPU, which is what it's all about. Activation code. So for the graphic settings, we're going to use the PC version because I'm not able to actually record inside of the headset. So first of all, we go to general options. In general options, normally I leave everything more or less enabled and as is, I don't really touch this. Um, and then if we go back, we go into the video options. Of course, uh, for the resolution, you can actually bump the resolution down because this is for um, the display itself and you don't really need this to be honest with you so this can be taken down now for the v-sync uh, always make sure that v-sync is turned off because this will create some stutter inside of the actual gameplay and then also make sure that your max fps is not set to 60 but set to 90. Uh, this i don't believe you can actually do inside of the vr headset just to let you know um, so you have to do this on the pc and then the GPU, make sure you choose whichever one you want. Uh, for the motion blur amount, I haven't really experimented with this, so I will maybe upload a separate video to talk about this. For vignetting and scan lines, you can actually enable it or you can disable it. Uh, for me, I disable this. I don't need this. And then we just click on apply for here. Then we go inside of the actual graphics options, which is where you basically, you know, have all the good stuff. Now to start off with, normally what I would do is I would just start off on standard to begin with and then base complexity I will also put this on low and for anisotropic I will put this on two because this is actually what it's what the setting is in the VR mode uh, when you start off so basically we just start off with this and then let's just see what uh, what we get after we click apply Accessing archives. Every time you make any changes to the graphics when it comes to high standard, you know, all this kind of stuff, I highly suggest that you close the program and then do a fresh restart to make sure that, you know, it actually works properly accordingly to your changes. Now, you'll notice that when we first uh, boot up the actual program itself, that it takes a lot of computational power after you've chosen whatever option you want to play. You'll see you'll be inside of some kind of field inside of the galaxy moving 
And if we look at the frames per second, I mean, the CPU is up to, you know, is in the red and that is not good at all. We also see a lot of red and some kind of purplish bars in the actual GPU um, temp and usage as well, even though it does say that CPU is 69 and the temp usage is 68. So this is because basically the program is caching all the graphics that it needs once it's actually loaded. So my tip would be just let it do its thing. Don't touch any buttons, just wait. Because if you don't, what's gonna happen is, is when the program loads, you're actually gonna have some stutter for quite a little bit of time, maybe 30 seconds to a minute. And it might not actually feel very comfortable versus just letting it load naturally without touching any buttons. Then afterwards you'll see everything will be pretty smooth from the get go. 50%. So in terms of GPU temp and usage now, of course, having the super sampling at 50%, it's clear that everything's in the green. The temperature is more or less okay. We should not go above 81. Otherwise we will start to get some stutter and it can get pretty dangerous in terms of, you know, ruining our GPU um, as it were. But there's clearly a lot of work to do because the graphics are far from you know, up to par, there's a lot of blurriness, a lot of jagged edges everywhere. Just it feels very uncomfortable, even though the gameplay is very smooth. And clearly we have 90 frames per second. You know, it's just not doing things as what we need it to be. However, let's not forget that all these readings, you know, I am using an RTX 2070. So if you don't have this kind of card, perhaps it may be what you need to run it as. And I'm going to show you why as we go along. All right, so now let's change the graphics to ultra just to get a reading the difference between, you know, the standard settings and the ultra settings. And let me restart. Authorizing. Okay, we're back inside of No Mind Sky and now we actually bumped up the settings to ultra. I didn't make any changes, you know, whatsoever other than just changing it to ultra and anisotropic uh, sampling is still at number two. So no other changes. And as you can tell already, the GPU temp and usage is now in the orange. Now orange is considered to be okay. Not the most ideal to be honest, but it's okay. It's not, as long as it's not in the red, you're okay. Um, and then also the temperature itself is still in the seventies. As we can see, the CPU temp and usage is kind of in, oh, it's in the green more or less, and also a little bit of orange there, but we are in the sixties. So it's not too bad. Now you do need to know that we did enable reprojection. If you want to know all about reprojection, do go and check out the previous video that we uploaded about Assetto Corsa Competizione, where I show you how to change and, you know, enable all these kind of settings to get the best graphics and also frames per second for that VR experience too. So what we're going to do now is we're actually going to bump up the super sampling to 100% because that unfortunately you will see will be the only way to get as sharp detail as we possibly can. However, we're going to bump down the settings inside of the game back to standard and just start from there and see how, you know, we can improve things to begin with. Landing sequence initiated. So now we've increased the actual super sampling settings to 100% inside of Steam VR and all the settings are put to standard. We haven't made any changes. We'll make the changes one by one. You know, in just a little moment, that will be coming up. So do stay tuned for that part. And as you can tell already, I feel so much more comfortable inside. Everything is much sharper, much more clearer, and everything is running pretty much okay. The CPU temperature is running how it's supposed to be, which is all in the green in the 60s. And then also the GPU temperature, we're still inside of the 70s, and everything is running in the orange, which is not super ideal, of course, but it's still safe. So that's really what is important. And then also we have reprojection running in Steam VR and also the reprojection running in Windows Mixed Reality. Now, if you want to go and learn all that kind of stuff, as I mentioned, go and check out the previous video as I show you the step by step as to how to do that. Now, to be honest with you, I could run the game like this. I would be pretty much OK with it. However, of course, we do want to see what would happen if, you know, we could start to bump up some of the actual graphic settings inside of the game to make it that much better and see how far we can push the graphics at a level that we feel comfortable with. This is not a drill. Now the textures are going to take a lot of computational power. So definitely have to be, you know, a little bit careful here. Now, if you put it on standard, generally it will create its own feel, which 
you know, could be something you get used to versus to high where you see a lot more definition in terms of, you know, the items specifically with the flooring. It's going to affect the floor much more than, for example, the ship itself and also any textures that have some kind of bump maps to it. Now, bump map means basically some kind of 3D aspect to it. So, for example, for any flooring that has, you know, items like rocks or any items that had, for example, some round shapes or some kind of blocks on it, then it's going to create some differences there. Otherwise, for any textures that don't have any definition inside of it, it won't generally make any difference and you can, you know, keep them on standard in that case. Now for the animation, generally speaking, I don't really see that much of a difference. So to be honest with you, we're just going to leave this on standard because it does tax in terms of GPU, but it doesn't augment the gameplay. So I'm just going to leave it there. Now for the shadow quality, it's something that generally speaking only shows, you know, a little bit of increment in terms of gameplay, but it doesn't really make that much of a difference. So generally speaking, we tend to leave shadow on standard because simply it taxes so much on the CPU, you're definitely going to lose some frame rates using the shadows. And you know, as soon as you bump it to enhance, you're definitely going to feel it there. So for us, we're going to definitely leave it on standard throughout the gameplay. For post-processing, now this can be a give and take. It will definitely take some frame rates on your GPU for sure. And it's also going to increase the heat of your GPU. So do be very careful there. Now, honestly speaking, although it can be good to have it on enhanced because of course it will post process everything the animation the textures the sharpness you know all these kind of different things but honestly speaking i didn't find that much of a difference in terms of the gameplay between standard and enhanced and when i put it on high the gpu simply can't really handle it it's going to get too hot so it's not something i can really put on high so for us in terms of the you know standard is perfectly fine for no Man's Sky on the HP Reverb G2 using the RTX 2070. Now, in terms of the volumetric effects, this is something that is very, very interesting because, of course, the better the volumetrics, the more kind of immersion we're going to get because all the smoke and the fire and, you know, all the different particles that are floating around, of course, are going to look much, much smoother. However, I didn't really find that much of a big difference, to be honest, between standard and high. You know, it didn't look much noisier. It didn't look super much smoother. So for the purpose of you know the gameplay, I'm going to keep volumetrics on standard. And also, of course, the higher the graphics for volumetric options that you choose, the higher the frame rate is going to eat from your GPU and the hotter it's going to get as well. So that's why I've decided to go with standard. Terrain tessellation is basically going to enhance the 3D aspect of the entire terrain in the gameplay and really going to bump up those details you know on the floor so you're going to see a lot more rocks a lot more definition in terms of the plants and all these kind of things and the moment you put it on ultra if you can oh my god you're going to feel like you're in heaven now unfortunately our graphics card can't handle ultra it will just die we don't have the cooling system inside of the actual gpu but if we did have the cooling system then of course we could put it on ultra without any issues at all so unfortunately i have to bump it to enhanced but enhanced already does give some pretty good details and already it makes me feel much more ins immersed inside of no man's sky now planet quality is supposed to bump up the immersion however in vr it doesn't really seem to have that much effect in terms of the quality and the immersion in the gameplay and you know it will take some taxing on your gpu so for that reason i just leave it on standard because as i said i didn't really see any differences there now, base complexity is something that perhaps will take more of an effect when you're playing in multiplayer or when you have, you know, a lot of different bases that you go and visit along the gameplay. So for the purpose to begin with, I'm going to leave this on low. And then when I get to the actual part where there's a lot of bases and all these kind of things, then I might bump up the settings to standard just to see how it looks like. But honestly speaking, low is perfectly fine, I'm sure. Now for the anisotropic filtering, which is supposed to help you with everything, you know, to be sharper and crisper, Honestly speaking, when I turned it up all the way to 16, if we look, you know, all the way into the landscape far as we possibly can, or as the eye can stretch, as they can say, honestly speaking, it didn't make any difference whatsoever. Uh, certainly not in VR anyway, perhaps it does on the, you know, display without VR. So for this purpose, I just left it to two because I simply did not see that much difference. And you know, it is going to eat up your frame rates and heat up your GPU. So do be careful there. Now for the G-Tau, which is supposed to help with the ambient inclusion and making things better, 
no, same thing. I didn't really see that much of a difference. It does apply a filter. It is very clear that the shadows, you know, are a little bit better. And also you'll see on the ground, it doesn't look so bright when you apply it. However, to be honest with you, you know, you'll, you'll be just fine if it's a standard. You don't need it. It's, it's not a must have. It's a nice to have maybe if you want to feel that things are slightly a little bit, I would say in terms of brightness, a little bit, uh, you know, more balanced. But other than that, it's really not a must have and it does eat on the frame rate as well. So for that purpose, I just left it to standard. This is not a drill. So as you can tell, the graphics here are already much better compared to what we used. And you know, why don't you try it out and leave a comment below and let us know whether you feel it already made some changes for you. However, of course, you know, this wouldn't be VR Essentials if we didn't try to make things even smoother and more clear without, of course, burning our GPU. And I forgot to mention, if you want to go and check out the global settings we use for NVIDIA, then go and view the previous video for Assetto Corsa Competizione. I'll put a link below which shows you step by step the global settings that we generally use. However, in part two, I'm going to show you exactly the settings I used to bump things up and make things even better in No Man's Sky for the HP Reverb G2 using NVIDIA, as well as changing some settings in Windows Mixed Reality and also the Windows Microsoft software. So make sure that you are part of the notification squad by enabling the notification bell after you subscribe. So YouTube tells you in your video feed that we uploaded that video and that you don't miss it. But until then, guys, thanks again for joining us today. I'll see you in the next video.